you knew we were going to get to it eventually. It's the toothless, sitting on the porch, spitting in the wind, great-grandpappy of all Bigfoot films. This week, Toes of Terror is going to be taking a look at The Legend of Boggy Creek. The 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 Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. The Legend of Boggy Creek was released in 1972. It was directed by Charles B. Pierce and written by Earl E. Smith. I was seven years old when I heard it scream. It scared me then and it scares me now. After about five minutes of nature montage, The Legend of Boggy Creek finally begins with those ominous words. The Legend of Boggy Creek is like no other film that I really know of. Part travelogue, part horror film, part musical, part nature show, the film is a little bit of everything. Though it was filmed on an ultra-low budget with a Bigfoot-like creature that, when looked at in freeze frame, looks like a Halloween gorilla suit one might find at an old pharmacy, The Legend of Boggy Creek is still somehow one of the favorite movies of all time when it comes to Squatch Heads worldwide. I think a lot of the appeal has to do with the amateur way the film was shot. You never really see the monster close up. It's always the grainy footage in the background, kind of like most Bigfoot videos. The Falk monster, as it's called in the film, is always seen from a distance or through a thicket of trees or bushes. This monster is a mystery to this little corner of the world, and remains one right up until the end of this film. I think the biggest appeal this film has can be attributed to nostalgia. It's a film I saw as a kid on video, and I think I remember it terrifying me. It popped up in tons of movie theaters and drive-ins. But upon seeing it recently, I wonder why it caused a mere shudder. Director Charles B. Pierce, who also helmed The Town That Dreaded Sundown, which also shot in a mockumentary-style travelogue way that, for the most part, lacked any form of narrative. Legend of Boggy Creek is a series of encounters recounted by people who have crossed paths with the beast. Aside from the Falk monster itself, the film really has no star. If there is a shred of linear storytelling going on, it's held together by the narrator, whose Jack Handy voice reminded me of the old Disney documentaries. But even the narrator's part is only made substantial at the beginning and at the end, though I did find the words spoken at the end to be haunting regarding a grown man looking upon a harrowing experience with the creature. So no story, no star, no plot. What's the appeal? Well, there is some of the coolest, hokiest music you're probably ever going to find in a film. Take a listen to this little ditty called Hey Travis Crabtree, describing one typical boy doing typical boy things. Hey Travis Crabtree, wait a minute for me. Let's go back in the bottom, back where the fish are biting. And what about this little jingle talking about the wonders of nature? This is where the story plays, a world on which we seldom gaze. Page from the book of yesterday's, birds and beast and wind and water. It makes you want to draw a happy little tree, don't it? The soundtrack to Boggy Creek is so painfully wholesome, it stings. Yet somehow it rocks at the same time, and I can't stop humming it for days after viewing it. Hey, Travis Crabtree. But this isn't all sunshine and waterfalls. There are a few very tense snippets in this film, as the Falk monster attacks houses and the country folk living in them. This isn't the noble savage or gentle beast that is portrayed in other Bigfoot films. It's not a nice monster. You know this because it likes to reach through screen windows and has a tendency to scare kittens to death. What a horrible beast! Though the closest we got to the creature is when he breaks through the screen window of a cabin, there is a real sense of terror in those night scenes. Maybe it's the grainy film grade, or the amateur camera work. Somehow, it does get to you. But still, the hokiness of the amateur acting and the gorilla suit do its best to chill those thrills. I'm going to give The Legend of Boggy Creek three foots and four toes. The 
for sheer nostalgic charm. If anything, The Legend of Boggy Creek does serve as a means to feature some gorgeous American landscape of swamps, countrysides, and pastures. Though the monster isn't scary, the story is piecemeal, and the songs are as hokey as can be, there's a sense that we're catching an honest glimpse of a genuine land filled with genuine people whose belief in the creature in their swamps is palpable. That sense of reality makes this film hit home effectively, and it's why, despite all of its shortcomings, The Legend of Boggy Creek lives on. That'll be it for today. Please chime in down below in the comments and let me know how on the nose or mind-numbingly wrong I am, or you can counter with your own review. So guys, you know how YouTube works. I'd love to be able to dedicate more time to this channel. I'm not monetized yet, so if you want to help me out, remember to hit all the pertinent bells and whistles down below. Want some spooky comics to read? I have two new horror comic book trade paperbacks you should look out for. Both Grave Trancers and Pirouette, collecting never-before-published issues, can be found in only the finest of comic book shops. If you're looking for written reviews, you can find them on my website, mlmillerwrites.com. If you really want to show your support, I also have a Patreon page, at mlmiller. Look for the link to my Patreon page down below. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, Travis Crabtree. And take care. You're doomed to live the life you're meant to be. Stuck inside your reality. You're